Masamuna is a fat shit excuse of a human being, but everything changes when his crush rejects him for looking like Jabba the Hutt. Thanks to this earth-shattering violation, Masamuna hit the gym for eight years and returned to his school as a megached, seeking revenge on his old crush. On the first day of high school, he prepares himself by looking in the mirror and posing like a self-loving degenerate, while the sister, Chinatsu, tells him that he needs to stop beating his meat and get some hose. His mother, Kinue, who suspiciously looks like she would turn on lolly loving degenerates like you, asks the two siblings to breakfast. Masamuna channels his inner Jiga Chad and declines the high-calorie breakfast that his mother prepared for him. On his way to school, he starts monologuing like an idiot about how hot he is, and all the girls start drooling at him like he's the second coming of Michael Jackson. In front of a school, another hot idiot proposes his love to a girl nicknamed the Cruel Princess, Adagaki. Living up to her nickname, Adagaki starts spitting mad bars and violates the guy, calling him a limp willy trash can and declines his feelings for her. Seeing Adagaki's actions, Masamuna feels intimidated and remembers his past when Adagaki calls him a fat piggy and tells him that she will never love him. In class, with his pretty privilege, he gets special treatment, getting free food from his friend, Kojiro, and even a pat on the back by the class rep, Futaba, after sleeping in class. Suddenly, Adagaki enters the classroom with her slave, Mishino, and calls out another boy who proposed his love for her, and she tells him that he looks like a pudding who doesn't deserve her love. Seeing it unfold, Masamuni then pulls a James Bond and spies on Adagaki to get more information about her, and he gets information that she likes to eat lunch alone. He then quietly follows Adagaki's lackey, Yoshino, to find out that Adagaki is actually a slimmer Nikokado avocado and likes to eat a lot. With this information, Masamuni now has a weapon up his sleeve. He then starts becoming chummy with Adagaki and starts getting closer with her, but Adagaki always tells him to touch grass and stay away from her. Later after school, Adagaki treats Yoshino like shit and tells her to get her something to eat. Suddenly, the pudding boy that she rejected shows up and starts assaulting her, as he is jealous of Masamuna. From out of nowhere, Masamuna shows up using Toborama's Flying Thunder God and saves Adagaki from Pudding Boy like a superhero, and Pudding Boy runs away. Masamuna then rises her and starts monologuing again like an idiot about his past. Eight years ago, Masamuna was a fat turd who gets bullied, but then Adagaki saves him and he falls in love with her. But Adagaki calls him a pig's foot and that she will never love him. He looks to get revenge by getting her to love him, and then dump her like the trash she is. Masamuna then starts tweaking and laughing like a true degenerate after thinking about his genius plan. The next day, Masamuni receives a love letter in his locker, but the letter calls him Pig's Foot, which means that his cover is blown. Masamuna tries to find out who sent the letter and starts suspecting everyone, even Futaba and Kojiro. He starts tweaking out of fear that people will find out that he was once a fat, shitty excuse of a human being who gets no bitches. Not wanting that to happen, he starts his detective work. He remembers the Navy SEAL training that he has to go through to get in shape and uses it as motivation. Suddenly, lunchtime starts and everyone rushes to get their food from the cafeteria, and among them is Yoshino, who is in the back of the line. She gets pushed back, and the plot gods strike again. As she falls and shows Masamun her mint-colored panties, Yoshino starts tearing up and recites her death wish as she fails to buy some food on her list. She hands the list to Masamuna to buy, and with his chiseled abs and hard work, he successfully gets the food. Yoshino's eyes start to glimmer as she sees her savior Masamuna, who got her the food. Masamuna tells Yoshino that he knows that the food is for Adagaki, and he asks to come with her to Adagaki. Yoshino tries to run away, but Masamuna catches her and pulls her cheek. After some convincing, she lets Masamuna come with her. They make it to Adagaki, and she starts insulting Yoshino and calling her names for being late to bring her food. Masamune watches them from the outside and comes in after Yoshino leaves. After going back and forth with Adagaki, Masamune makes a conclusion that Adagaki was not the one who sent him the letter. Suddenly, Yoshino comes in and slips, and the plot gods bless us again with the sight of her panties. Later, Yoshino shows her pure kindness as best girl to Masamune, but Adagaki tells her that Yoshino is her slave and only hers. Masamune then rises Adagaki and tells her that he wants to be her slave too, and leaves the room. After school is over, Masamune walks home while scheming his next steps to attack Adagaki's feelings. Out of nowhere, he steps into a booby trap set up by Yoshino and hangs him upside down. Yoshino calls him Pig's Foot and turns out to be the person behind the letter and asks Masamune if he wants his revenge. Masamune then tries his hardest to remember his past and finally remembers that Yoshino was a maid in Adagaki's mansion. 
He feels defeated and tells Yoshino that he will have his revenge on Adagaki. In a huge plot twist, Yoshino turns into Judas and tells Masamune that she will help him have his revenge. The next day, Masamune is reluctant in trusting Yoshino, thinking it's another trap and that she will show his browser history to the world and embarrass him. To get even closer with Adagaki, Masamune joins the tree hugger committee that takes care of the school's environment, but Adagaki still avoids him like the plague. During his work at the committee, the class rep Futaba approaches him and apologizes for pushing him to join this committee. She then invites him to watch a movie together, just the two of them as a date. Hearing her confession, Masamune starts daydreaming about his future babies with Futaba and almost folds under her charms, but he pulls himself together for his mission and doesn't give her a proper answer. Here Masamune realizes that he's actually popular, and girls want him to be their baby daddy. He starts giggling like an idiot, knowing the reputation he has, but suddenly Adagaki pops up from behind to confront him about something. Masamune suspects that she starts getting jealous due to his popularity, and with his full chest claims that he would love to go out with Adagaki. Adagaki tells him thank you, and Masamune's confidence skyrockets thinking that he has won her over. He then asks for her contact information, but she comes up with some bullshit excuse, and tells him that she will give it next time, and he agrees. Later, he waits for her to come to fulfill her promise, but instead she leaves letters with clues and sends Masamune into a wild goose chase involving brooms and chickens, only for him to end up in his starting point. He then looks out the window and see Adagaki with a big sign rejecting his advances, making him look like a complete fool. Suddenly, Yoshino shows up and tells him that he's a complete new, and that with her, he will get his revenge. A few days later, the class rep Futaba blows up the classroom with the news that if one of the students has a failing grade, then the whole class has to take extra sessions. The femboy, Kojiro, tells them that his grades are extremely low, and that he has a room temperature IQ Masamune, takes the dumb femboy to the study hall, bends him over and starts studying with him. Out of pure coincidence, Adagaki is also teaching Yoshino, who is also a complete dumbass. Adagaki then starts talking trash at Masamune, calling him an overconfident idiot who likes to bend over and get manhandled by femboys. He remembers that Yoshino is actually on his side, and after hearing the disrespect from her, Masamune stands up and challenges her to a competition on which pairing can get the higher score on the test, him and Kojiro or Adagaki and Yoshino. If Masamune wins, she will have to go on a date with him. But if Adagaki wins, he will have to be her daddy and pay for all her lunches. They both agree, and the battle is on. Back in her mansion, Yoshino tells Adagaki that Masamune is actually the second coming of Albert Einstein, and that he got a perfect score in his transfer exam. Adagaki is surprised to hear, and starts to feel intimidated. Back at home, Masamune is beating his meat, but then he receives a phone call from Yoshino out of nowhere. Masamune thinks that Yoshino will help him with the bet, but Yoshino calls him an imbecile and that she can't do it. Then, Masamune meets Adagaki at school and starts testing each other's knowledge and abilities, in which Masamune is able to answer every question. He realizes that he will have to count on his own ability to win the bet. Starting the studying montage, Masamune keeps teaching Kojiro day in and day out, while he himself studies extremely hard. His sister and midget mother even think that Masamune is crazy for studying instead of hitting the gym. The day of the exam arrives and goes by quickly. Masamune goes to buy some drink for him and Kojiro, and at the vending machine he meets Yoshino, who apologizes and gives him encouragement and treats him to some black coffee. Masamune is confused with Yoshino's behavior, but quickly finds out that his stomach starts to hurt and realizes Yoshino sabotaged the coffee by putting laxatives in it. The exam finishes and Masamune J walks out of the class and goes to look for Adagaki in her classroom. It turns out that Adagaki didn't come to school because of fever, and his mother's shit cooking is what caused him to get a stomachache. A few days went by, and it turns out that Masamune has to take extra lessons. But to his surprise, Adageki is also there, and he sits right beside her. He finally manages to get his wish and secure a date with the cruel princess, Adagaki. She shows up cosplaying Sailor Moon to the date and gets everyone's attention. Some ugly nerd approaches her and asks for a picture with his camera and snully armpits. Masamune shows up and saves her from him. It turns out it was Yoshino, who set her up with the over-the-top costume. She poisons Adagaki's mind by making her think a weird costume is needed for first dates. During the date, they go to the movie theater, but it turns out that Adagaki is a young sugar mama and rented out the whole theater just for the two of them. They start watching the movie where Walter White gets chased by zombies and cornered, but then the zombies start making zombie babies with each other. The movie ends, and it knocks Adagaki out cold with how much of a masterpiece it is. 
Afterwards, her stomach growls, and they go to a restaurant to eat where Adagaki starts inhaling the food like there's no tomorrow. They're about to talk about something deep, until suddenly a little stupid kid shows up and starts violating her Sailor Moon cosplay. Masamuna finally tells her the truth that the costume is not necessary, and this causes Adagaki to be self-aware and quickly change to new clothes. While in the changing room, she starts crying like a baby and Masamune quickly comes in to check, but only to see her half-naked, and she punches him out cold. He wakes up on her lap as she is also sleeping, waiting for him to wake up. From then on, her heart slowly starts to melt for him. After the date, Masamune reports back to Yoshino, and she tells him that his revenge mission might humble Adagaki, which is a good thing. Back at home, Masamune studies romance mangas as a source of information to get Adagaki to fall for him. He learns how to do the slow-motion kiss scenes. At class, he executes his master plan, and that is to keep staring at Adagaki like a total idiot with missing chromosomes and deliver a cringy one-liner he learned from the romance manga. When it rains, he shows up out of nowhere and offers her an umbrella while saying a dumber one-liner and runs into the distance like an imbecile that thinks he's cool and laughs like he's a genius. Later, Yoshino tells him that Adageki thinks his actions are extremely disgusting, and that his obsession with using romance mangas as reference are dumber than a rock. She tells him a plan, and that plan is to withdraw and mix things up by having ice in his veins and be as cold as possible towards Adageki. He feels worried about this new plan, but he proceeds to execute it. Adageki tries to return his umbrella, but he channels his inner Sigma and ignores her. Even in class, he does it again and ignores her while she tries to return his umbrella. After school, he's confident that Adageki will now jump on his willy, but it turns out it backfires and she becomes cold towards him. Yoshino tells him to not fold like a bitch and commit to the plan. Days pass by and each day, Adageki gets further and further from his willy. Masamumin has a mental breakdown over not feeling sexy enough, but suddenly Adageki ambushes him with death written in her eyes. He tries to run away, but she quickly throws his umbrella at his fat head and blocks him from getting away. He almost succeeds in escaping but she quickly catches him and starts humping him from getting away. Suddenly, she starts crying and asking why he is ignoring her. Masamuna watches in awe on how Yoshino's plan has worked out. He quickly regains his composure and starts rizzing her up, but as she starts to get serious and ask him why he likes her, Masamune folds and runs away like a coward with shrunken balls. He runs away like a total degenerate and questions his own sanity as he didn't expect this much progression in their relationship. The next day, he tries to give her a letter with his feelings inside it but she throws it away and tells him that she despises him and runs away. Masamune doesn't know what he did wrong, but Yoshino then tells him to pick up his balls and be a man that doesn't run away when asked about their feelings. Yoshino tells him to step back and let her handle things, but Masamune refuses and creates his own plans. Meanwhile, Adagaki is skipping class and remembers the other day where she saw Masamune and Yoshino talking in the garden and assumed that he had been talking to other girls beside her. Suddenly, Yoshino shows up and admits that she has been seeing Masamune behind her back. Before Adagaki starts going crazy, Yoshino calms her down and tells her that Masamune only has eyes for her, and that took her by surprise. Yoshino then asks Adagaki if she likes him too, and she reacts like every Sundere in existence and denies it, even though it's true. Yoshino disappears like Batman, and Adagaki goes to look for her, and on her search she starts thinking about her past and her relationship with Masamune. Suddenly, a car almost takes over truck Kun's job and sends her to another world. But Masamune arrives just in time to save her. After saving her, he tells her that he can't live without her. She blushes after hearing his words, and just when they're about to kiss, a girl disturbs them. The girl is shocked to see Masamune's handsome Squidward face and starts praying, thanking God for blessing her eyes. She suddenly hugs Masamune out of nowhere and starts a love triangle. She pushes her melons to him to assert her dominance but then pulls herself back after realizing what she did. She tells him that she knows who he is as she holds him with her soft hands, making him start activating his reproduction system. He tells her that she got the wrong person, but she insists that's not the case. Suddenly, her butler, Shindu, shows up and asks her to leave. Adageki sees the whole thing with disgust and tells him to touch grass, make babies with trees, and leave her alone. To make up with her, he goes to the cafeteria and starts buying food and brings it to her. But suddenly, someone from the bushes starts to open fire and shoots rubber bullets at him. And it turns out to be Yoshino. After falling to peer pressure, he explains to her about his situation with the mysterious woman who suddenly wants his willy. Yoshino is upset for his actions, but then leaves him as a chance for him to talk to Adagaki. He imagines a scenario where he tries to raise her up, but she randomly wears a Darth Vader helmet to repel him. He goes to the door to open it, 
but stops and instead drops the food and leaves it for her to eat. The next day, he fails to get some sleep and starts daydreaming about the mysterious girl, as she is totally his type. The class starts and the teacher comes in with a new transfer student, and with a harem and who made gods on his side. It's the mysterious girl from the other day. She introduces herself to the class as Neko as she lights up the class with her beauty. During the break, Masamuna fails to get a moment with her, as she is already extremely popular among the class. He keeps trying to talk to her, but always fails as she is always occupied by her own Yuri harem. After gathering enough chakra and bravery, he approaches Neko at her table. Suddenly, the group of girls stops and looks at him weirdly, and it turns out that Neko moved to this school just for Masamuna. She recalls her past where three years ago during Christmas, Neko was in public gathering donations in the cold when suddenly, Masamune put his warm coat around her body to warm her up and put money into her donation box. He then starts rizzing her up and calls her an angel. The crowd goes wild hearing her story, but Masamune is confused hearing the story, as he was not the guy in the story, and that he was still a fat slob back then. He takes Neko's hand and pulls her away to talk privately outside. She falls to the floor not being able to catch up, and starts coughing out blood. He starts panicking and helps her out, but suddenly she drops a packet of ketchup from her hand. It turns out that she lied about the blood in the Christmas story, but she doesn't want to tell him the truth and tells him that her feelings don't change. Masamune blushes to her rees, but pulls himself out of it and tells her that he likes someone else. Neko starts tearing up and asks him who that person is, and he brings her to see Adagaki. Seeing her competition, Neko smiles and sees her as nothing but a small fry with flat melons. With the biggest balls between her legs, she confronts Adagaki and starts a war with her over Masamuna. Masamuna tries to stop them, but suddenly the plot gods bless us once again and send a wind that blows Neko's skirt up and shows that she's gone full commando by not wearing anything underneath. Both Masamuna and Adagaki see it, and it pisses Adagaki off, causing her to leave out of annoyance. Masamuna tries to grab her, but she punches her way out and accidentally punches a teacher's face in the process and gets punished. The teacher tells them to clean the school's swimming pool. Masamuna starts monkeying around and squirts water all over her, and she plans to squirt all over him too as revenge. She carries a bucket that is too heavy and slips into the pool, getting her all wet. She struggles to swim, and Masamune quickly jumps into the water to save her. Instead of showing gratitude, Adagaki starts insulting him, telling him that his feelings are fake, but he has enough and barks back at her, telling her that he really does like her which surprises her. She tells him to prove it by kissing her. Meanwhile, Yoshino is left behind, waiting for her master, Adagaki. Suddenly, Neko shows up and starts interrogating her, asking her where Masamune is, to which she replies that does not know. Back at the pool, Masamune is still taken aback by her request to kiss her, and thinks about her soft lips. He imagines a scenario where he finally gets his revenge, declining her kiss, in a romantic beach, and not in a random pool on a random Tuesday afternoon. Adageki gets tired of waiting and calls off the kiss, but Masamune quickly pulls her to him within kissing distance. He imagines her as a piece of meat and goes for the kiss, but she pulls out and gives him an uppercut. They'd argue, but it's cut short by Futaba and her friends from the swimming club. Adagaki steps out of the pool to run away and tell him that he's nothing but a dog in a mating season, leaving him in the pool with blue balls. Afterwards, Masamune is haunted by his attempt in kissing her, then, Neko comes and sits next to him. Masamune is in a terrible state after what just happened, and Neko reads his situation clearly and gives him a salty hot tea. She then starts blabbing about the benefits of salt to battle dehydration and some other medical BS. He enjoys his tea and then clenches his cheeks and asks her what she likes about him. He feels confident like a total buffoon, thinking that she will have a difficult time in answering the question. But she tells him that he loves his charming modesty and how she will never give him up. Masamune folds to her Rick roll and answers, and now sees her in a whole different light. She then leaves and tells him to be more confident. Neko decides to take a walk home, and Ushino takes the chance to follow and spy on her. She follows Neko, but from behind her is Neko's bodyguard, Shidu who catches her in the act. Yoshino tries to play dumb, but Neko then saves her from her bodyguard. Yoshino tries to fool Neko with her pure girl act as well, but Neko tells her to stop acting as a dumb bitch. Yoshino asks her why she's obsessed with Masamuna. But before she gets to answer, Masamuna's three-foot-tall mother comes in and invites them in by force using her cuteness. Masamuna comes home to the side of them cooking in the kitchen and pulls Yoshino to his room to explain everything. Yoshino explains to him what happened and sees what's inside his room, which is nothing else but weights and half-empty vaseline bottles. Neko then tries to join the fun in his bedroom, but he manages to push her out. They then have dinner, and Masamuna's sister, 
Chinatsu starts snitching on him, telling them how he used to be a fat pig, but Masamune quickly stops it and starts the dinner. During the dinner, Chinatsu points out that Masamune and Neko would make beautiful babies together, and then she invites them to play with fireworks afterwards. The girls start wearing yukata and bless our eyes with their beauty as they play with fireworks. Neko charms Masamune with her beauty, and she smiles every chance she gets, making his heart skip a beat. Masamune thought to himself that if he didn't have his revenge plan against Adagaki, he might have developed feelings for her. Neko then goes home with her bodyguard, while Masamune accompanies Yoshino to a nearby taxi stand, and she warns him to not fold for her underwearless cheeks. Meanwhile, Masamune's mother points out that she's really happy to be able to meet Neko again, showing that they have met before. In her car ride, Neko manages to steal a picture from Masamune's room of a younger Adagaki and Masamune as a fat pig. Summer vacation finally begins and Masamune has a plan, which is to invite Adagaki to a beach episode with him. Adagaki comes in and tells him, not on my watch, and tells him that she will spend her summer vacation in a fancy beach villa instead, and invites Kojiro to spite him and make him jealous. Suddenly, Kojiro comes in clutch and tells the Ho that wherever he goes, Masamune goes as he is the only person allowed to bend him over. Neko comes in and tells her that she will be there too, and Futaba jumps in and wants to join as well. Masamune smugly smiles and tells Adagaki that all of them have to go together. Finally, they all join Adagaki in her beach villa. They go there by a huge boat, and Yoshino approaches him on the boat, and tells him that she can't find a logical reason why Neko is obsessed with him. She then tells him that on this vacation, he has to finally make a move and lay the pipe on Adagaki, and if he fails to do so, she will stitch on him and his whole plan to Adagaki. Meanwhile, in the villa, a hot milf is having a mental breakdown while she is waiting for Bo's arrival. The hot milf, Yuzaki, who carries balloons in all the right places, greets the students and welcomes them to the villa. Yuzaki is surprised to see a boy among them, and asks Adagaki who he is. With his balls tucked between his legs, he announces with full chest that he is her boyfriend. Adagaki throws his suitcase at his dumb head and starts arguing, but Yuzaki is very happy to see that Adagaki manages to get a boyfriend. Yuzaki starts violating her and telling her that she can't believe that Adagaki manages to find a man that enjoys her non-existent melons. With her cheeks flustered, Adagaki has no choice but to agree and go along with it, as she wants to always look good in front of other girls. She then pulls Masamune away to her room for some alone time. They'd argue, but come to a conclusion that they will pretend that they are dating while on the island, and Masamune agrees to be her rent a boyfriend for the time being. On the beach, Masamune poses with his body like a total imbecile, as he feels confident that he will be able to win Adagaki over. Sadly, no one cares about his shit physique except for Kojiro who is a dude. Neko then steps in and pushes her melons into Masamune and starts flirting with him. Out of nowhere, Adagaki separates them and tells Neko that she should step back from her rent a boyfriend and go touch sand somewhere else. She then asserts her dominance and pulls him away to somewhere quiet, while Yusaki watches from afar. Adagaki uses their fake relationship as a weapon and tells Masamune to go and fetch her some food from the house. Masamune goes to the house and goes to Yusaki who prepares her some food, and he then asks her for recommendations of fun activities. She recommends them to go and have a test of courage. After he leaves with the food, Yusaki starts talking to herself like a maniac, and tells Masamune that she doesn't agree that he becomes Adagaki's baby daddy. Back when she was still working at the mansion, she first met Adagaki crying over a fat boy and starting her villain arc of hating men, and Yusaki watches with joy as she has also done wrong by other men. Now she can't believe that a narcissist like Masamune is able to win her heart. At night, they start their test of courage in a dark abandoned drug house. He plans on saving Adagaki after she gets scared and unable to move his feet as her knees tremble, and lifts her up and carries her like some delusional hero and lives happily ever after as her boyfriend. Inside the scary house, Yuzaki has a plan to scare Masamune using a scream mask and make Adagaki have a neck towards Masamune and break off their relationship for good. Suddenly, Goshino comes in clutch wearing a Jason Voris mask while carrying a chainsaw and scares Yusaki out of her position. She chases her around and even scares off Adagaki and the others as she runs through the whole house wearing a scary mask. She then gets herself scared after seeing Neko and knocks herself out, running at a pole. Afterwards, she wakes up on Masamuna's back as he is carrying her, and he thought that she was helping them scare people and making the experience better. She blushes and falls to his immaculate rees, and he tells her the truth that their relationship is fake. She sees him in a different light and considers him as a good person and perfect to be Adagaki's baby daddy. The next day, they go back home and Masamune is scared that Yoshino will snitch on him, 
but it turns out that she is impressed by his plan and chooses to spare him. A few days later, they go back to their normal lives and Masamune starts by working out in his room in his underwear. He checks himself out in the mirror and admires his abs and tiny sausage. Suddenly, Adagaki calls him, and he starts tweaking like a loser who has never touched a woman before. It turns out that one of his luggage is left behind on the island, and Adagaki wants to return it to him in person. Yoshino warns him to be careful and not make any silly mistakes that will ruin his plans. Later, he wants to do his homework and realizes that the picture is missing from his drawer, and he quickly realizes that Neko is behind its disappearance. The next day, he meets up with Adagaki, and she returns his belongings to him. She then warns him that being too close to her is dangerous. He notices her blushing face and remembers the same face eight years ago. He feels worried that Neko would quickly notice that the young girl in the picture is Adagaki, and as he gets lost in his thoughts, he ignores what Adagaki is saying to him. She stands up in a fit of rage and leaves him alone. He realizes he needs to get his ship straight and lock it in. Suddenly, Neko calls him to invite him to a pool, but then he quickly asks her to meet up with him. He meets up with her at her home, as she is wearing beautiful clothes that show her best physical attributes. At first, he feels nervous about entering a girl's house, but quickly knocks himself out of it. He quickly makes an excuse to the bathroom, and starts looking for the picture that she stole. He sneaks into her room, and slips on a bottle of vitamins, confirming it's her room. He looks around the messy room, and even finds her rated R stash of books. He sits down and starts reading one of her books, and Neko sneakily whispers in his ear from behind telling him that the tea is ready. Neko accidentally confesses that she has previously sneaked into his room and bought the same manga that he likes. He then bravely asks her if she stole his picture, and she calmly admits that she did. She pulls the picture out between her juicy melons and calls the fat boy in the picture as cute. Seeing a girl calling his old pathetic self as cute, Masamuna's heart skips a beat. She pulls him closer as if she's ready to be devoured and whispers sweet things in his ear. She then kisses him passionately for a while, while holding his hand, he feels her soft and luscious lips and gets lost in the sauce, but quickly pulls himself away from her. She then gently and slowly pushes him to her bed and rests her body on him with her melons pushing on his chest, and slowly aims for another kiss that will lead to loud and happy noises. Masamune closes his eyes as he slowly wants to give up his plans of revenge against Adagaki. But then, he remembers her face and bitched out of the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. He tells her about his past and how he used to be bullied and taken advantage of since he was fat and wealthy. He then tells her that she doesn't really like him, and her emotions are not actually serious. He didn't lay his pipe to her and left her dry, craving for him. She lays down on her bed and starts crying after getting rejected. The next day, Masamune and the others meet up at a train station to go to a water park together. Masamune looks bleak and gets a stomach ache every time he hears Neko's name. Futaba tells them that Neko has cancelled her plans to join, and Masamune feels that it's his fault. In their time at the water park, Adagaki keeps noticing that Masamuna looks down and defeated. While the others have fun, Yoshino asks him if something happened, but he tells her not to worry. Suddenly, Neko's car arrives at full speed, and Neko's bodyguard, Shidu, quickly steps out of the car and interrogates Masamuna. It turns out, Neko has gone missing in the morning, and she is worried that she left without any of her medications. She is surprised to see that Masamuna does not know that she is extremely sick, since they were so close. He starts to remember her taking medicines and even coughs blood from her mouth and realizes that she was not faking it. He starts to realize her true nature, faking her illness, and not wanting for her friends to see her as weak. Shidab demands an explanation of what he did to her the day before in the apartment. Everyone is in shock hearing this, especially Agaki who spent the day with him on the same day. He gathers his courage and tells Shidu the truth, that he declined to go out with her as he chose Adagaki over Neko. Adagaki quickly kills the awkward tension and tells them to focus on looking for her. Adagaki asks Shidu to bring them close to the apartment, and for some of them to stay with Masamuna, as he seems to know where Neko is located. No one stayed with him, and everyone left him to go with Shidu in her car, leaving Masamuna alone. Masamuna feels dejected to see that Adagaki doesn't care about his confession at all, but quickly locks in to find Neko. Shidu and her group fail to locate where Neko is despite their best efforts and Masamune goes to one more place he thinks she might be in the school. Suddenly, Adageki joins him there as they have the same idea of where she might be. She tells him that even though she doesn't like Neko, and she thinks that she is a weirdly created specimen of a human being, she does feel bad for her getting rejected. Masamune takes it as an insult, considering how Adageki has treated all the boys who like her, and how she treated them like shit, and how they must have felt towards her. 
He remembers his past being called a pig's foot by her, and then he asks her straight if she remembers anything about her insulting someone pig's foot. Before she gets to answer, a paper airplane hits his head, and he sees more paper airplanes flying from the roof. He remembers that Neko also likes the same romance manga that he did, and the paper airplane was from one of its chapters. He quickly runs to the roof and remembers how in the manga. The heroine gets rejected by her beloved senpai and goes to the roof. They recreate the scene from the manga, and Masamune finally finds her on the roof, throwing her love letters as paper airplanes. He approaches her weak and frail body and calms her down. She faints and he catches her, as she is extremely weak from her illness. He quickly tells Adageki to contact Shidu and get help. He finally sees what's written in the paper airplanes are her love letters for him. Later in the hospital, everyone is worrying about her, but Shidu tells them that she is stable for now. Neko asks to talk with Adagaki privately, and Masamuni is sitting alone, thinking if he had made a mistake with wanting his revenge. He slowly gets deeper and deeper in his own thoughts of self-regret, but then Adagaki calls him and tells him that he's next. He enters the room to see Neko laying weak on the bed, and she asks him to talk about the past in a classic flashback. She remembers her time at her old all-girls school, and how the girls there love and appreciate her. Even then, her illness causes them to not be able to be with her normally and she gets special treatment that she doesn't like. In her home, her grandfather suggested for her to go overseas for a surgery, but he was hesitant. But Neko tells him that she wants to try but one request, and that is she wants to fall in love. Masamun asks her why he is the chosen one, and she replies that he was picked randomly like a lottery. She feels happy for him to be her first experience in love, and how passionate he is as a person. She tells him that after she gets healthy, she will go far away and she thanks him for all the beautiful and lovely memories that he helps create. In the waiting room, Futaba tells the other that she also has feelings for Masamune, but Yoshino doesn't care at all for this random and unimportant character. Futaba then acknowledges that Masamune likes Adagaki, but is curious as to what she feels towards him. Masamune finally gets out of the room, and Adagaki is the first to try and talk to him, but he keeps walking and ignores her completely and leaves the hospital. Back in the hospital, Shidu asks Neko, if she really wants to let him go, and she says yes. She then looks at a picture and triggers another flashback, and in this flashback is the true reason why she fell in love with him in the first place. The two of them met each other at an event. On his way home, Masamuna thinks deeply about his own actions and his plan for revenge as he is the same as Neko, as someone who faked their love towards someone. Even with that in his head, his hatred still blinds him and wants to take revenge on Adagaki for hurting her in the past. At the mansion, Adageki thinks about what Neko told her that she shouldn't act tough and accept Masamuna's love, as she is also in love with him. She blushes to the thought of it and tries to cope her way out of it. She thought about if she should really like him like how Neko suggested to her. She then remembers her past love with a fat boy that she loves and how she loves her fat piggy cheeks and her fat stomach rolls. Suddenly, someone disturbs her in the garden while she is getting into it. It turns out to be a fat piece of shit who looks similar to Masamuna. The fat bastard brings a letter from his even fatter grandpa that states that he and his micro Willy should marry Adagaki as a form of diplomacy between the two families. He then introduces himself as Gaso, and Yoshino quickly tries to call Masamuna, but fails as he is in the mountain with no signal on his own, training like Rocky. He then poses to the sun, basked in all his sweat and glory like a total dumbass. The summer vacation is over, and on the first day, another guy tries to win Adagaki's heart but she quickly makes him look like a fool. Her girl group starts cheering for her as she rejects another man, but a member of her group, Mary, points out that she has spent most of her time with Masamuna, and even spent the whole summer with him. Suddenly, Geiso and his massive love handles show up and start flirting with Adagaki. The girls expect Adagaki to turn the fat turd down and humiliate him, but to their surprise, she accepts his ruins. The girls couldn't believe their eyes as their precious idol, Adagaki, is willing to go out with Geiso and sleep on his sweaty blubbers. Masamuna rides at the school happy with how sexy he is, and is surprised to see Neko is still there. She tells him that she has undergone a surgery where parts of her body have been removed. She then asks him what's his progress with Adagaki, to which he responds nothing. She almost takes his head off, but stops after hearing that he was deeply thinking about what she previously said to him. That his fake love would never reach Adagaki, no matter how hard he tried. He sees Adagaki outside with Geso and laughs out loud thinking that Tubby has a chance against him. After school, he goes to Adageki's class, and it surprises him to see that Geiso is very close with her. Masamuna then asks him who he is, and he then introduces himself as Adageki's future husband and baby daddy. 
Masamuna goes crazy and quickly pulls Yoshino to explain to him what happened. Yoshino tells him that what he just said was real, and that he will be a guest at their mansion for the time being. She worries about Adagaki, since she's been acting weird, and that she might actually be in love. Not believing in what he just heard, Masamuna channels his inner Sherlock Holmes and starts investigating the fat bastard. He finds out that Geso, despite his height and weight, is athletic. He is also smart, and is quite popular with both boys and girls. Masamuna can't figure out why Adagaki is attracted to him, and not Masamuna's sexy six-pack. Yoshino apologizes to Masamuna and points out that Adagaki has met him in the past and that a girl's heart is unpredictable. Meanwhile, in a non-copyright McDonald's, Adageki's girl group is upset that Adageki betrays them and their ways of hating men, when suddenly Geso shows up and asks to join them. At first, they want nothing to do with him, but he manages to convince them. The next day, Futaba leads the class in discussion for the school's festival, and decides to elect Kojiro to play Snow White, and Masamune as the handsome prince in a yaw play drama performance. Masamune tries to get Adageki for an alone time, but fails as Adagaki doesn't want to talk with him, and Geso shows up to prevent them from talking privately. From afar, the girl group watches and they are on Geso's side, as he manages to win their trust back in the fast food place. Both Adagaki and Masamune class want to portray Snow White as their show. One of the girls from Adagaki's group, Sunoka, who is an annoying midget, is the vice president of the school council, and she puts her favoritism forward and chooses Adagaki's class to portray Snow White. Hearing class proposal is denied, Tanabe walks to Adageki's class and tries to convince them to let their show go on as their proposal was submitted first. Adageki comes and starts arguing with Tanabe, but then Geso comes in as mediator and asks them to calm down. Instead, Masamuna comes in and pours gasoline in the fire and declares war on them, and a bolt shows judged based on popularity vote, and the winner of the vote will have their show greenlit. He then pulls Geso aside and challenges him to a bet and that is for the winner to have the final dance with Adagaki. The days after, they start the rehearsal with Futaba, acting as the director. Futaba directs the play like a tyrant and starts her trade on Kojiro, who stars as Snow White. Even though he's a dude, Kojiro can't handle the pressure of being on the receiving end and runs away crying. Kojiro then runs into Neko, and she gives him encouragement and treats him like a proper man. Kojiro's heart skips a beat to her calming presence, Meanwhile, Masamune is trying to call out Kojiro from hiding and put in a Snow White's dress, when suddenly Geiso shows up to confront him. Geiso starts talking shit to get in Masamune's head, calling him a malnourished stick who doesn't get bitches, and then he starts talking about how Adagaki likes his chunky sausage better than his skinny sausage. He manages to get to his head and walks away. Masamune is more determined than ever to beat them now. On their way home, Adagaki and Geiso stumble upon an ice cream stall, and as Adagaki is buying, Geiso thought about his evil and his real reason in marrying her, which is to get her family's wealth as his family has been poor. Years ago, he pretended to be Masamuna, as they looked similar, and pretended to be the person that was close with Adagaki. The next day, the festival starts and Masamuna caught a cold after standing on his rooftop while being half-naked like a complete degenerate. He is determined to get healthy before the show and plans to rest before it's his class turn, but suddenly, Neko shows up and pulls him to look around the festival. She brought him to the nurse's office, and turns out she already knew he was sick from a single touch. She tucks him in under the blanket and tells him to rest so he can give his best later, but she tells him that if he loses, she will gladly be his dance partner. She leaves him to get him something warm, but someone is waiting outside to sabotage. Meanwhile, the girls of Adagaki's class are changing clothes, but Geiso accidentally steps in to see their beautiful bosoms, and they kick him out. Geiso was just trying to find a place to change, but suddenly a mysterious figure wearing a costume guides him somewhere to change. At the festival, Kojiro is walking alone, thinking if he has a chance with Neko, but then he sees her at a booth and approaches her. He tries to raise her and be more manly, but fails as his voice sounds like a rubber duck. They both go to Masamune, but find out that he has disappeared. It turns out, one of Adageki's groupie Kikina kidnaps him and puts him in a room where no one can save him. Tanabe and Neko fail to locate him anywhere, but Kojiro then tells them that he suspected that Adageki's class is behind this. Kikina tells him that she plans to keep Masamune trapped until Geiso and Adageki dance together and finally lay the pipe. Suddenly, Adageki's class is also in panic as Geiso has also disappeared into thin air. It turns out that Yoshino is the one behind his disappearance, and she did it to give Masamune a fighting chance. She tries to call him, 
but fails and realizes that they have the same plan in kidnapping Masamuna. Masamuna tries to fake dying so Kikune will let him go. But then, Kikune starts yapping her delusion as Adageki's bodyguards and triggers a useless flashback that even Masamune doesn't want to hear. She tells him that once upon a time, in her kendo club, she always loses to a guy that cheats his way to a win, and that guy tries to reza Adagaki and fails miserably. Kikune sees that as amazing as to how someone manages to beat that cheating bastard easily. From then on, she became Adagaki's bodyguard. Masamune pulls out a massive IQ move and tells Kikune that she is no different from that guy, as she is also using a cheating method to win by kidnapping him. Kikuna then starts questioning her morale and existence, but finally decides to let him go. Suddenly, she receives a phone call from one of the groupies, Mary, and she wants to talk to Masamuna. She asks him to end the bet in a draw and return Geso to them, as she thinks that Masamuna and his class is behind his disappearance. Masamuna quickly guesses that it's Yoshino's doing and pulls his big willy out and assert dominance, telling the groupie idiot, Mary, to touch grass. Mary is fuming after getting absolutely annihilated, but Adagaki shows up and tells her that the show must go on, even without the prince being present. Mary tells Kikune to leave Masamuna and look for Geso, but then Kikune starts attacking Masamuna as she thinks that Masamune is behind this. Masamune runs away by jumping through a window, but he jukes her and hangs by the window, allowing her to drop to a pool below them. Masamune regroups with Futaba and Kojira and tells them that they have won since Geso is missing and unable to act. They tell him that Adageki's class is still performing without their prince, which surprises Masamune. Masamune rushes to the auditorium to see Adagaki's performance as he worries for her. He arrives just in time to see Adagaki perform, and thinks that their performance and setup is extremely good. He feels as if their performance and preparation is way better than theirs, but then Mary confronts him. He asks her why they continue without a prince, and she tells him that Adageki feels that she doesn't need any prince to proceed and she doesn't want to let her class hard work go to waste. Mary starts crying emotionally and congratulates them for their win, but Masamune is touched by their emotions and quickly looks for Yoshino so she can release the fat bastard, but before he even tries to find her, he sees her on stage as an admirable elf. He realizes that he doesn't know where Geiso is located, and he only has one solution to help Adageki to solve her problem. He goes to Mary and tells her his plan. Adagaki lays down in her coffin as Snow White has bitten the poison apple, and only a true love's kiss can wake her up. Adagaki thought to herself that the show should end like this, that Snow White never gets saved and never gets to find her true love. Suddenly the prince arrives, and it turns out to be Masamuna, who becomes Adagaki's prince. Masamuna tries to act his ass off, and hopes the other actors to stop being dumb and read the situation in hand. The elves manage to catch on and respond to the prince perfectly. Suddenly, the prince falls down as Masamune is getting sicker by the second. Mary is about to explode, thinking that he is trying to embarrass them, but Kikune explains to her that he is actually very sick. The prince walks slowly and almost falls again, but thankfully an elf played by Yoshino catches him and tells him that she will bend him over later and to keep going to Snow White. Yoshino's encouragement is enough to push him forward towards the coffin for the final kiss. The prince kneels in front of the coffin as Adageki awaits for him to fake kiss her. Suddenly, Masamune pulls out his biggest trump card and kisses Adagaki for real in front of everyone. Unable to control her emotions, she punches the prince and knocks him out. The elves rejoiced as Snow White came back to life and lived happily ever after. Gaso arrives to see that the show is over and that he is too late. After the festival ends, Adagaki's class becomes the winner as Futaba's show is cancelled as Masamune is unable to play his role due to sickness. They arrange an after-party at a karaoke with both sides attending. They then start another bet with the best singer as the winner. Putaba goes first as she chooses the same song as the opening in a shameless promotional plug from the song's artist. They then take turns singing songs, but Adagaki's groupie has a plan to get Masamuna to sing and out himself as a horrible singer that will turn off Adagaki's interest. Masamune runs to the bathroom out of nervousness, and the groupie confronts him, telling him that he can't run away and has to sing. Adagaki shows up and saves him from the embarrassment, and tells the groupie to choke on a microphone. She tells him that it's his turn to sing. She comes in but Neko already chose a song beforehand, and that song is Adagaki's favorite song. She can't help but want to sing, and Neko invites her to sing together. They then sing together in unison like veteran idols, and the others watch in amazement to their fantastic performance. Masamune watches them in awe as both of his potential future baby mamas sing the song gleefully. After they finish, the two girls are still unable to see eye to eye. 
Finally, it's Masamuna's turn to sing and his singing is so beautiful that it causes everyone to start foaming from their mouths and see the gates of heaven. After the karaoke, Masamuna and Adagaki spend some alone time on a park bench while the other goes home. Masamuna tells her that he's not leaving her alone until Yoshino comes back with her food, and Adagaki starts talking shit to him, but stops midway and gets flustered. She then asks him what she should do to properly thank him for saving her, and Masamuna thought about licking her toes, but instead asked for a kiss. She then tells him to close his eyes, and goes for a kiss, but suddenly pulls back and shoves a massive sweet potato in his throat, to which he doesn't gag. She then goes home and Yoshino tells him that he is an idiot, and that he should have raised her up, and tell her that he will never give her up. If you watched this anime recap until the end and want the season 2 recap, comment Fat Belly is Love, Fat Belly is Life. If you like anime recaps like this watch this video.